What is up? What's going on? <laughs> a lot is going on, especially reality television. I got to ask you real quick. Uh-huh. Who do you blame? Okay. Do you blame Raquel or do you blame Sandoval for everything that's going on in Vanderpump? Well, you know, you can go with that he had, he was the one, with, you know, that had a commitment. But I mean, they're both horrible, horrible people because she kind of has a commitment too, like in a friendship. Like, how is that getting lost? Like, don't you owe that to your friend? Like, where's any loyalty? I mean, it might, it's kind of an unspoken commitment, but like, who she's so she and I hate her reaction to it all. Like she's just not doing herself any favors with the way she's just like, no, you know, I wanted to find out what it was like to have sex with somebody that you love. And it's like, that's your best friend's boyfriend. Like, I don't know. I think it's both they're despicable on all levels. All right. But. So you and I are both fans of the show. We talk about this show a lot. So my question is, remember how poorly she was treated when she first came on the show? Everybody kind of wouldn't let her into the circle and they weren't very nice to her. Yeah. It almost se- seemed like to me during the time off, she, she's like, you know what? I'm going to blow this whole thing up. Maybe. And <laughs> and whether it's the greatest plan of all time to blow up the entire circle, she she did it. But it is, it's crazy. Neither Tom is that bright, obviously. And and then she's at a whole nother level of, I, I can't believe what I'm watching. That trio, but that trio is just village idiots. I swear yeah. to God. The three of them I can't, is yeah dumb dumb I, dumb and dumber yeah Terrible. i can't stop watching nicole i'm embarrassed to say that if i had a choice between the super bowl or watching the reunion i'm watching the, reunion over the super bowl. Like i'm i'm so into this show right now oh yeah i can't me tell too. you me too you know? I will be, and we are not alone in that those ratings exactly. are oh. killing it they are they are all right so i'm just curious i know you're, you're you and i have talked about it but we didn't talk about the last show and the reunion which starts and everything that's going to go down but uh, i'm i'm all in i, I don't think i've been more excited can we talk about for a second what raquel's motive for going after katie like what was that conversation I, I, like you know and she doesn't appreciate the way katie's treating tom and it's like who are you like the, the delusions of grandeur on that one are just just mind blowing. I, I just have to say, I felt so bad. Like, I wanted to reach in the screen and slap her. I don't know how okay. Katie didn't choke her out. I would. I don't even. Ah. Okay, so I'm glad you said that because I'm watching as a guy going. Here's the difference of men and women. If that was a man, and it, talking to another guy, a fight's definitely breaking out. Oh yeah. Now she felt comfortable enough to sit right at that table, knowing nothing physically bad's going to happen to me. But if that were two guys. Are there, there, there are people are getting punched in the face. Something's going yeah. on. Yeah, I think she was intoxicated too because I, when I watched yeah. it back, um, she was drinking pretty heavily through that whole yeah. lead up. So maybe this was not a clear decision she made to have that stupid, stupid conversation. But I no, she couldn't read the room at all. She could not no. read the room. She could not read the room. But she's just yeah, like I said, the three of them, village idiots. Yeah. Like none of them have any sense about them whatsoever i mean i love that i let listen <laughs> you know the <laughs> but whoo not so bright not so bright but no. let's get to our show should we because we have a great let's do it. yeah so um let's introduce nancy Ballen, who was also on baywatch and so many other things hi nancy hi how are you guys good to see you good to see good. you too. um so good. i i have a question Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, I love it. No, because you know Nancy has such a large body of work and has been working forever on some of the best programming there is, and she produces and she's got it all going on. And I always wonder, like, does it ever like kind of tick you off that people say like you're most known for Baywatch, or like if people recognize you and just kind of like just use the Baywatch and kind of leave out all the other stuff that you've done? Or does that not happen? I mean. Oh, thank you so much for acknowledging that. Um, look, I am I think I'm most known for one episode of Saved by the Bell. It's so weird. It's like more people recognize me. I think I have like four fans left. But anyway, out of those four, three of them recognize me from Saved by the Bell. So um, it's just, uh, it's funny that I get that a lot. and. Um, I'm just flattered that they still recognize me at all. Like, oh my God, they recognized me back from 30 years ago. Yeah, you, you still kind of look the same there, lady. It's uh, yeah. very, very, very young. Yeah. Amazing. You have not changed. Yeah. Oh, but I'm you know, so glad to hear that because um, that always kind of like 
it always gets to me. It's like you, Erica, and I, and it's it's always like when they go, oh, from Baywatch. Ah, that was like, you know, two years or however many, you know, I don't know how many seasons you did, but it's like, this is like this much of like this whole career, you know? And it's You like, have a vast career. I mean, you know, I'm sure that it, you know, but, but right, we have to be grateful for the thing that really got us, you know, Baywatch allowed me to do so many, you know, other things, especially like endorsement type stuff, which, um, you know, people are like, gosh, why is she doing that? I'm thinking, well, it's pretty amazing to get, you know, a percentage of proper of, of a product sale of something, you know, that you believe in, especially. So that yeah. opened, you know, my world up to, you know, financially, it was, it was great. Because as you might have experienced, you probably were like me, I, I heard that I was getting paid, you know, more than any other new person and that they could have hired six girls for what they were paying me. So they must have been paying you like, so much more because you were, you know, very established name. I know Yasmin was getting more and Pamela, obviously, and you know. Pamela, after a while, finally renegotiated. I, I know, they, I right when I entered the contract with these guys, I knew that this was like, this is shady shit because it was like, oh, it's a favored nation show. And I'm like, I'm not working for favored nations. Oh, except for you. And um, here's your contract. And oh, and here's an NDA, <laughs> you know, you Ooh, can't do that. I did sign an NDA too. Yeah, you couldn't tell that you were paying, you were being paid more than anybody else because it was supposed ah, to be Huh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that you, that you were, <laughs> that you weren't getting that little paycheck either. That's because it was a little paycheck. They were not paying people very much. It was yeah. like, paying people like $2,500 or something. I think that's what they were getting. Yeah. I think that's the, what they were getting. I think I got like six, which was, which was below, way below my quote at the time for any pilots that I had done. But they were like, "Look, take it or leave it. She's gonna make, you know, she's gonna be a name, you know, make herself a name. She can do other things and all of that." And so, yeah. yeah. And for a lot of people, they hadn't done anything else, so you know. right. And they were happy to be there, and the show was established, and uh, yeah, all of that. And it's still a good payday, like in the real world. <laughs> and Pamela, oh my gosh, amazing. But you know, right? You only have like I think I did 14 episodes. So people think that that's what you're getting paid, you know, all year round. Right. right. Um, right. But I think Pamela was, I don't know, she must have been getting a lot, like fifty thousand or I think I think towards the end. I, I remember when she went in to like renegotiate because I don't think she did for a while. I think she was on that really low, <laughs> low pay scale at first too, because she hadn't done anything. And, um, but yeah, yeah but she, she was the tool time girl, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, who knows? You know what? I don't believe anything about this anymore. They, they, she could have also signed an NDA. <laughs> like, right? Right. Yeah. Who knows? Like, I, I, I gotta stop believing. But what are we not supposed to say? Was it just about that? Well, I, I guess I, I don't know how long. The, what, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good now. I think statutes have run out by now. I remember one, one cast member got so upset that I said in an article that, um, that I and a lot of the girls wore full body makeup. I said, except for Pamela. And so I was like, how could you say that? What? what? I thought it was nice to say it because people, you know, so women don't think like, geez, how do they have such perfect skin? Which Pamela, by the way, I wasn't on the same year, so I didn't inspect your skin, but I did inspect Pamela's head to toe all the time when I was on the set. I'm not ashamed to say she was so gorgeous. Like even her feet were fantastic. Yeah. Jeez. And she never wore, as far as I knew, she never wore body makeup, but maybe that wasn't true. I don't know. None of us wore body makeup at first. Oh, you guys. Um, Mm -mm. I was covered, just so you, full, full disclosure. <laughs> I was covered. It was probably smart. Um, there also was no sunblock. Uh, but no, because right. the body makeup was like, we just, I body makeup freaks me out because it gets all over everything. So um, I'd rather just wear clothing that covers everything, <laughs> you know, than use any body makeup. But um, yeah, was my skin was still good. I mean, listen, I was 19, 20 years old, like, whatever. <laughs> Nancy, I was, still, I was still like you know worshiping the sun. So, Nancy, it's funny when you said that you get recognized by Saved by the Bell, but for right. for me and, and you know my friends and we're we're all around the same age. Mm -hmm. um, when you were in Lover Boy, that's yes. when we we recognized you in that. It was here's the goofy thing about myself and my friends is what we. We love high school movies, even to this day. We love high school movies. We love college movies, the whole deal. And so for a guy, it was like, oh, man, this is the, the greatest movie of all time. But 
when you talk about you're in it with Patrick Dempsey and and but you were in it because we're all around the same age. Every one of my friends was like, "How come we didn't get more of her?" We were all, were, you know, you, we, you know, we 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 saw you at the beginning, we see it at the end of the movie. We were like, "How about you know there wasn't more of her?" But you caught our eye right away, and and I know you know you're probably going, "Well, I would have loved to have a bigger part too." But you aren't just some fly by the night person. Like you've been an actress for a long time. I mean, yeah. since since a young age that you know, all of a sudden you're accomplished. You're winning awards. You're offered scholarships. You're were a real actress. You weren't just someone that got discovered and say she's a pretty face. Let's stick her in this. Can you talk about where you were when you started your career in acting and where it was going and and where you wanted to end up? Um, gosh, well, I would spend the summers in New York. My grandfather owned a hotel at 77th and Broadway called the Belclair. And I actually lived there until I was seven. And then we would spend the summers there and I was just bored. And my uncle was a model and he's like, oh, you should model. And, you know, when I was eight, they wanted to sign me, but they're like, ah, she doesn't live here. And then years later, when I was like 13. I said, oh, I think I want to do that, you know? And so I'll never forget it. Um, I leaned forward, looked at me and said, your eyes are too far apart, your chin jets out and your nose is too wide and you'll never model. And she was wow. rude to like wow. 13 or 14, however old I was. And I walked out of there and I looked at my mother and I said, I want a model. She said, well, I don't know what to do. I said, well, you have to get me an agent. And she said, well, I don't know what to do. I said, well, figure it out. You're my mother. <laughs> 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 just like ignorance and confidence, right? When you're a kid. Um, and she just opened the phone book and she was like, okay, I'll call this person. And I'll never forget, like standing on the side of the corner in New York going, okay, okay. Oh, did we get somebody, you know? And I went up to her and she signed me. Now I didn't do 17 magazine, but I did catalogs and stuff like that. And then that led to commercials. And the first time I went up on a commercial audition, I looked at it and I got so freaked out. I turned green and I left. My mother said, you're not going anywhere. I said, I am. I can't do this. And so I was I was singing a lot at the time. And my singing teacher said, oh, she's got to go to an acting class. So I went to HB Studios, um, Herbert Berghoff Studios, where Uta Hagen taught. And it was there that I just like, for the first time, because I was shy. Yeah, I was kind of popular in school, kind of like after I get comfortable. But I was pretty much shy. It was not, I was very insecure and shy. And so... Well, I just never forget like being on stage and feeling comfortable, more comfortable than I felt with people. And wow. and I felt like I could be myself, you know. Um, so that's when I kind of fell in love with acting. And then when I went back to Florida, I went to a performing arts high school and I started modeling down there. And um, and then, you know, you start making just a little bit of money and you're like, you can't tell me what to do, mom. And, you know, you start getting <laughs> cocky and I'm like, I like this. But I really did fall in love with it. I was passionate about it. We did um, shows at actually Parker Playhouse. And I, I worked with really incredibly talented people, too, at that school. And the teachers were amazing. And I'm just so grateful for those experiences. Um, and then I just I think it was timing, too. I got seriously lucky with like, um, you know, Miami was just really like blowing up in terms of, um, you know, at that time, casting people, you know, locals. And so they would come into town looking for a local for a job. And I was probably like one of the few people who had been really studying acting down there. I don't think the pool of actors was that big. Um, and so I got cast down there. I did a couple of Miami Vice and we're going way back. I'm aging myself. A movie called The Heavenly Kid. I just, you know, and really didn't know what the heck I was doing, but everyone was so helpful. and. Um, and yeah, whatever, whatever experience I had, you know, the acting teachers really liked helped and doing theater help that helped a lot with my, um, uh, auditions for soaps when I started going to New York a lot. So, and I was just really happy and got on a soap and, you know, in New York, I went to New York actually to study acting for one summer. And at the end we did a showcase and I got picked up by an agent and they started sending me on soap auditions and I started getting screen tests and I was flying back in forth from New York to Florida and it was so much fun, but I was failing tennis because <laughs> parts, you know? um, and I thought, okay, let me just stay out here in New York. And I, I moved to New York and uh, you know, I just never went back to Florida. Um, and uh, luckily I ended up getting a show called Ryan's Hope um, yeah. a few months later. And that's actually where I met my castmate Yasmin 
um, Leif, she was 16 and I was 18 and, and we met each other um, there. So that was a great experience. And then it was New York to then a few years later to, to California. So I just did the whole thing. <laughs> that's that's quite a job, huh? A soap. Like that's really, like I don't think people realize how hard, like what hard work that is. I've never done one. Um, I've been on the set and watched and was like, whoa, what? Um, it's really, really good training for an actor. I really wish that I would have stayed longer and I wish that I would have, um, we can't have regrets in life, right? But it would have been smarter of me, I think, to take another show after that, you know, like I was offered a couple and I didn't do them, you know, screen testing for movies and blah, blah. So it would have been nice, I think. It would have been good for me to do that. I mean, that, if you can get that job. Now they're all going away, right? Yeah. They are. Um, it's it's been replaced with reality TV, I think, right? I mean, it's sort of yeah. like the same like, audience, like making that, that yeah. um, pivot. You guys but are fans, huh? Huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not even a guilty pleasure anymore. Like I got straight open with it that I am obsessed. Um, but for people that don't know, like uh, and myself included, when you're doing a soap, like you have to, ha you have to know the whole script. Like you have to. Is it like, um, is it like sitcom work? Nancy was on Charles in Charge too. That's where we very yeah. first. Yes, we met. You're so cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is um, it like that where you have to act the whole thing out, or how does oh it work? Gosh, sitcoms, you look, if you can be talented at that, like you were, like, oh my gosh, it's not easy to, I don't think, to do that work in terms of the talent that's required to be that funny in that situation. However, getting to do a sitcom, like rehearsing all week, and then being able to do one shot, like that was amazing. To me, yeah. that would have been the dream job, you know? Um, soaps, no, are not like that at all. You are just cranking it out. You show up, you have a, like a run through rehearsal in the morning for the blocking, and then that's it. And then they they call you, you know, you're, you're in your dressing room and they have the thing like on, you know, like a, in theater and on sitcoms where they have the intercom and uh -huh. you've got to listen for when your scene is up and all of that and then and then that's it you, and there's so much dialogue right i mean it's like they talk and talk, they talk, and talk right <laughs> it, is, it is very they used to um they used to i hear that they don't have them anymore they used to have teleprompters in all the cameras but i could never use them because as soon as i looked at a teleprompter it would bring me out of the scene and then i wouldn't know i wouldn't remember anything so um, Grant Cho, who worked on that, um, great actor, worked on that, uh, on Ryan's Hope with us, he always said, Nancy, whatever you do, just keep going. Even if you don't make it up, just keep going. <laughs> you know, uh, so we never stopped. Um, there was not a lot of that, but you know, you, you know, you did what, some people were just talented at it. You know, some people were so good at just memorizing lines. Like they could just look at something once. And I think you get better at, you know, the more you do it, right? Yeah, you're you know, like exercising that muscle, yeah. yeah. All right, so one thing about me, Nicole, yeah, I haven't told you because uh, I'm embarrassed, but I'm a huge soap opera fan. Are you? I, like, I, 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 huge. All right, I started watching Ryan's Hope in 1977 because I went and spent a, spent a summer with my grandmother, and we watched everything. We watched Ryan's Hope. We watched Days of Our Lives. We watched General Hospital. I literally have kept up with General Hospital every episode since 1977. I'm still a fan. Oh, my and, God. Yeah. And I love I love soap operas and I am disappointed they're going away because it's like they're all being replaced by talk shows. Everyone's getting a talk show and they're just disappearing. And I imagine they're very expensive to run and probably don't have the same following. But um, when you were doing soap operas, because I was always curious about this as a kid, as an adult, number one, how many pages of script did you have to, did they give you the night before or the week before to, to memorize or try and memorize? And two is, <laughs> um, when you're when you're going through the process, like I, I noticed, everyone on these soap operas is so beautiful. Like the best looking people are on soap operas, but it wasn't like that on other TV shows. Like you turn the TV on at night, and go nobody looks like the people in the soap operas. That's and true. I think it was one of the reasons my my grandmother was always into it. Number one, the men and women were beautiful. The clothes they wore were fantastic. Yeah. And I was I always laughed. Like nowadays, it's you know times are different. But whenever like the quarter mains on on uh, General Hospital would come home from work. Everybody immediately went to the bar in the living room. Everybody had a drink. Everybody was drinking like crazy in every scene. And it was outside of being in the hospital, everybody was getting tanked. And so 
when when you're doing when you're doing the soap operas, going back to the first question, how much dialogue do they say? Hey, look, you got to get this down. And at first, was it overwhelming? You know, I don't I don't even really remember how much dialogue there was. You know, I I don't really recall. Um, I just remember that I was a huge fan as well at that time. Soaps were so big. And yeah. so even though I was like 19 years old, I loved it. Like I remember my friends and I piling into my friend's car, like when we, you know, for lunch break with General Hospital, like the wedding of Luke and Laura, like we were all screaming, like, go drive faster, you know. <laughs> we used to watch Ryan's Hope. And so when I got onto the set, I was just like, ah. Oh, I'm in Pine Valley. And this is where, like, I was a little bit psycho about that. Like, I felt yeah. like I had entered, like, you know how they have the pop up stores and the rides, yeah. Universal, for yeah. like, very modern, you feel like you're in it. Like, that's yeah. how I felt. I was like, I'm in Pine Valley right now. And I knew all the storylines and, you know, all of that. So, um, anyway, yeah, I, I don't I don't even remember about the dialogue. I, I don't know. I probably should have spent, you know, even more time. Um, than I did. Uh, I don't know. It was an amazing time. It was so much fun. It was like my college. You know, I just made life yeah. friends and I still have till this day um, just to be in New York City and just to go out and experience like, I, even though I was from Miami, I wasn't from Miami. I was from Hallandale, which is like between Fort Lauderdale and Miami. It's like pretty much of a smaller town at that point. And I had, like I said, been in New York, you know, born there and over the summers, but it was a different deal when you come back as like 20, you know, and yeah. um, going out to restaurants and being surrounded by, like you were saying, all these amazing, beautiful, beautiful people and just learning. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I probably didn't, I probably went up on my lines more than I should have. Um, <laughs> Nancy has no problem with dialogue. <laughs> that, <laughs> that doesn't stand out for her. Cause that's and, what I yeah. other actors is they're like, that it was so hard. You have to learn so much dialogue. And yeah, it was hard. It was hard. No, no, no. It was totally hard. And I think I did have a hard time with it. And I, and I, you know, it, it was challenging. It's challenging. You know, it's, it's hard work. Like, like anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So you were on Friends too. Was Friends before or after Baywatch? Friends was before Baywatch. It was the first season of Friends. And oh. um, I love that part because my whole family is from New York and they all talk like this. And, you know, so I could, you know, use the New York accent. And um, I love doing that part. That was so much fun. James Burroughs, the director, was so brilliant. He gave everybody every little thing on that show. He and Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry was just genius. They used to have him sit on, in on their um, writing. Like when they were thinking of redoing a scene, they would call him in to get his wow. input, which was really interesting to see. Um, and uh, yeah, he, you know, it was interesting about that everyone kind of, everyone was super talented, but everyone kind of set their lines the same way every time because they knew what the funny was. And Matthew Perry could say it 10 different ways and every time it was just funny. It was funny. I was wow. just so, so in awe of him. And like, I do something, I go like this, you know, and I shouldn't give it away because it made me look good, but I, I'm like, literally, he gave it to everybody. James Burroughs would just, he talks really fast. Um, I was told like, look, he talks really fast. So just listen, make sure you listen because he doesn't say it again. It's like, blah, 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 blah. you know, and he, he kind of would fly in and go, okay, Nancy, on that line, you know, you did it, go like this with your hand, like, okay. You know, and then he turned to the next person, do this and on that, do that on this, you know? Um, and then he would give line readings to people that, you know, would ask for it. Some of the cast would ask for a line reading if they didn't feel like, and he'd be like, this is it, you know? So he's oh. all hats off to that man. He's just, wow creativity like just amazing i'm just so grateful i got to work with him did matthew perry have like writing credit on that show at all no i mean i don't know if he actually wrote and i don't know if it's just because he was in the scene that they were doing but i didn't see them invite anyone else i mean it was just an entire group and they called him in to say what do you think can you come up with anything it was more like hey this would be funny or i don't think that or you know he's just yeah. so funny i remember uh, he was out one night uh, we were all out somewhere he was out you know, uh, on a date with somebody. Anyway, uh, I think actually with Yasmin that night somewhere at a club. And I don't know, he was just so funny. He was just like every other thing he was saying, we just couldn't stop laughing. Um, yeah, I've, I've hung out with him 
a, a few times. I, a friend of mine dated him. Um, really nice guy too. Really genuinely like nice yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. I always had a little mad crush on him. I think I met him before he was dating. I think a friend of Yasmin's years before that, like years before friends. I was like, oh, he's cute. Um, you know, and I'm so glad to see that he's okay now. You know, yeah. Like, you know, everything he went through. But they were, they couldn't have been nicer, the whole cast. It was a great experience. You, you know, one of the things Nicole and I have talked about before is, have you ever been on a show and thought, hey, this person's going to have a successful career? They're going to go on much further. And so you look at that cast, and, and obviously everyone on that cast was extremely talented. But in Courtney Cox, who I, I knew from not only the Bruce Springsteen video, but I was a big fan of the TV show Family Ties and go, OK, I recognize yeah. her. But Jennifer Aniston is the one whose career has really you know, blown up and, and taken off Amazing. and still to this day is extremely popular. Did, yeah. did you know at the time that, you know, Jennifer Aniston was going to become what she's become? I mean, no, all I know is she was the nicest person on the cat in the cast. Oh, she was nice. like to go out of her way just to be like, hi, how are you? She'd make you feel so comfortable. And I think that's a sign of someone that's really confident, probably, you know, you know, if you're freaked out about your performance and you're worried, you can't be like, hey, so good to meet you. Because you're like, shit, what do I do? You know, um, so, you know, maybe that that's a telltale. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, she's just so relatable, right? It's like that girl next door, but still beautiful. The skin on that woman, by the way. I was at a wedding with her and I couldn't stop staring at that skin. It's so <laughs> glowing. You can't really tell on TV, but she's just beautiful. She also comes from a... Um an acting family, right? So she also grew up in it. And yeah. Yeah. Her father, I think, was a soap star, right? Yeah. 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 Really well respected actor. So um yeah. Well, that's good to hear. I love hearing that. Because you Me know, too. so many people are assholes and you're like <laughs> they come across like so funny and great on TV and you're like, but they're not really yeah, yeah for sure. So you know, we've all had those experiences as well. Great. <laughs> yeah. I was I was cracking up because I looked at your Wikipedia really quick this morning. Yeah. And Nancy produced a show called Killing Scott Bayo. And yeah. I got I oh. had a little overexcited, but so it wasn't it, it, it didn't have a <laughs> plot line that I was hoping for. That's not a meaning that it had, but I have to say that I marvel. Like I don't I kind of gave myself a social media break pretty much, but you know, every I look once in a while. Uh, you know, I think maybe a couple times in the past few years I've looked at like your timeline in Scott's and go, wow, it's like still going on. And I'm so sorry for everything that you've experienced. That's it seems like it's crazy, but I can't believe that it's still like that. Well, he, he keeps it perpetuating. He, he, he oh. keeps it going. He don't let it go. I think he, he's one of those people that likes the weird, the bad attention. And he likes to just, you know, set people off on me, but I don't, I don't, once I came out with my story, I really didn't like want to talk about him anymore. I was more like on a healing journey. And it was like, but he, you know, he hired the crisis manager and they hire the trolls. And, you know, I was just being attacked. So I was taking breaks from social media, too, because I was like, this is not, you know, good for yeah. my mental health at all. Um, and the death threats and all of it. But whatever. It, so I don't hear anything and I have everything blocked and I have filters on, <laughs> on everything of what content that I see. We're getting death threats. Oh yeah. Yeah. Really bad. Um, the, uh, actually a detective came to me and said, you have to know that you're being followed. They have two people following you at all times. And he's like, and I just really want you to be aware of that. And I was like, like what in the hell? But yeah, and a lot of crazy ladies. Uh, a lady tried to, I don't want to make this interview about that, but um, uh, one lady tried to um, have me arrested for sexual assault and called my local police station. And they were like, you know, starting to take this report. And then when they realized that we had never met and there was never, she's in a totally different state, they were like, okay, okay. And then they contacted me. They came knocking on my door and like, you need to be careful. You need to be careful. There's crazies after you right now. Yes, so. Sir. Oh, weird, 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 weird. But um, yeah, so anyways, I was hopeful about that title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was actually a script that my partner at the time wrote, and then he rewrote it for Scott. Um, so yeah, anyway, not it didn't have that meaning, but yeah, I can see how you would have been like, oh, <laughs> that's this point. I like that, yeah. 
Nancy's also produced a lot of stuff, which I love because I love that side of it. I've only produced the documentary, which Nancy is also in. You guys, we get to great job with that, by the way. Thanks. It's it's coming along. It's looking really, really great. Um, Good. Thank you for including me. Yeah, it was, okay. thanks for being a part of it. But Nancy's done a lot of producing. Like she really is like, and she's got the education. Like I just feel so inadequate next to all my friends. Yeah. <laughs> what have I been doing? What the hell did I do with my life? I don't have any, first of all, I don't have any education. I mean, I went to school in Florida. South Florida is just the worst school system ever <laughs> in the country. I feel it's terrible. Um, and then, you know, I went to a performing arts high school for half the day. So I had English class, you know, at the performing arts high school where we read Shakespeare. And, um, you know, I, and then I had two years of community college, which I um, dropped out to do Ryan's Hope. I had gotten a scholarship to University of Florida, but, you know, I would have had to um, not, you know, I wanted to go to New York and I was worried that I would like have four years of college and then, and then be a waitress, you know, which is great if that's what you want to do. But. I wanted to be an actor. So, you know, I wanted to, you know, take the opportunities as they came. So I, I turned that down. Still don't know if that was the best thing to do. Um, you How know, did your family react? I'm just curious. Uh, you know, I, I saw that, that you were offered a scholarship to the University of Florida. I mean, a yeah, four-year yeah, school. Yeah, but, you know, but how did your family react to saying, hey, I'm going to turn this down because guess what? Where I want to be is being offered right now. My mother was really unorthodox. She was a teacher and she thought that education was really overrated. And if, if you're smart, you're smart. And um, I don't agree with her necessarily, but you know, I think, you know, some, some of the most, you know, brilliant people that have accomplished the most in this world have never even gone to school. So maybe she's right. I don't know. Um, but she was actually encouraging me to like, you know, quit. She was, they were enamored by actors. I think, you know, um, even though my uncle was an actor, I think she thought like at that time it was like, this is what you could do. You know, um, it was a different, I think it was a different time. And, and, you know, look, if Michael Jackson would have come calling, if I was a little, like I would have been at probably at his house, like that. My mother would, have been, <laughs> my mother would not have been savvy to that. She would have been like, Oh my gosh, Michael Jackson wants you to come over. You know, I don't know. I mean, I think, um, but yeah, they were a bit enamored. Like I never really was because I was always in acting class. And so I, I never really was, but they, they were. Um, and I remember I got an offer to go to Japan or something like when I was in my teens and my mother's like, quit school, quit high school and go to Japan. I'm like, I'm not quitting wow. high school. You know, I love high school. I'm not quitting. Um, so yeah, they, she was extremely encouraging. My mom, I wouldn't say that she was a stage mom in any way, because if I didn't want to do it in one second, she would have been like, don't do it. Um, and she was not the one driving the ship at all. It was all me. Um, but she would pay for the headshots. You know, before I had a car, she would drive me. But after I, I don't know, 16, I started driving. That was it. She didn't, she wasn't involved at all. She didn't, she came to New York for like two days to help me like look for an apartment. And that was it. She was gone. I didn't wow. have any, she didn't know anything about the business, you know, at all. So I didn't get any guidance like that, with, you know, anything like that. She's like, here's how to do a balance checkbook. Goodbye. You know, yeah. um, that's from back in the days when you used to do that, right? With your, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but she didn't put much stock in education. So, yeah, they were fine with it. Sorry for the long winded answer. That's really funny, though, and a, a teacher that. But I, I kind of agree with her that college is sort of becoming a thing of like, like if you know you want to be a doctor or you know you want to be, you know, some kind of scientist, you know, right. yeah, you got to do it. You got to go for it, law school, all that. But a lot of kids, they go to college and then at the end of the four years, they still have no idea what they want to be or what they want to do. Or they just yeah. did four years and they decide they want to do something else. And they're in so much debt, they can't do anything else. You know, it's like I, I do think the education system is a little my daughter turned down scholarships also and oh, um I, I was i was worried um but because like I, listen i was set schooled <laughs> like i i I, Wait, yes. highest, I was set schooled so like my highest education is like eighth grade yeah, yeah. I thought yeah was with a t <laughs> yeah I, I thought you said something else first oh, sex yeah, you know. yeah, we thought you said x not t yeah. Yeah. how do you think i got here i've been a sex worker my whole <laughs> <life>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no 
So it's, you know, it's, and, and she's completely successful. And I think if she had gone to college, she probably oh. wouldn't have the opportunity. Same, right. you know, the same, you seize the moment, you go what, where you're being called and what you feel, I think. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's really important. Definitely. And, and some of the most interesting people I know are actually self-educated. You know, if you have an interest, never stop learning. And now with a computer, right? It's not like we have to go like open up the Encyclopedia Britannica. Right? Oh my God. Yeah. Um, yeah, remember that, and you have to. Oh my God, crazy! Yeah. Oh my Lord! Imagine, if that, imagine if that was your job. If that was your job back in the day. Said, "I'm going to be set for life. I'm going to sell encyclopedias the rest of my life." <laughs> right? There was the that, that, yeah. Now you're out. Mid '90s. All of a sudden, the internet comes up, and you're out of a job. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. That's uh, that's why I, I so I'm curious about this, especially since, as you said, you were on a soap opera, Nancy, and, and of course, uh, Nicole's been on a bunch of shows as well. Yeah. How often do fans stop you in the street and ask you what's going to happen next, or have an idea of what they should do with your character? Um, yeah, when I was on the sh when I was on a soap, yeah, they they did, but they were more in New York. They were more just like crazy, like. It's Melinda, you know, be chasing you down the street. But here in LA, everyone's really cool. Nobody stops. I mean, very rarely. I think I went to a Dodgers game and people were like, it's the nurse from Saved by the Bell. You know, <laughs> that was, the last time I that was me. Time. Sorry. Yeah, I don't, that was you. <laughs> um, that was right. It was something that we all loved. I guess so popular that show. Peter Engel so nice. But anyway, yeah, no, I mean, I don't remember people like that. I think, you know, did if we, we couldn't say anything, right? You can't say anything. Um, we didn't know anything either, though. You don't know what's going to happen. You're like, oh, they're killing me off. You know, you don't know. You just don't know what's happening. Um, you know when you get the script, and that's it. So you really don't know. You can't really answer. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's funny you say that. So, I, again, I started watching these shows when I was young, and, you know, you just want balance. Uh, you know, you're going, okay, because every other show has a happy ending. And I'm sitting there watching General Hospital. I'm like, all right, when is everything going to be calm in Port Charles? And it's like a lot of bad stuff happens at Port Charles. Like, when's this going to come to an end? Like, eventually, you, you, there's a bad guy that gets taken out, but then there's a new bad guy. Right. And it never stopped. And it wrote me in for all these years. But well, at the same time, it, it, not understanding how TV works, if I didn't live in California, I think I would be that guy stopping you on the street saying, this is what they got to do. I hope they do this. You know, and I'd be the one driving you nuts. Go get this maniac to away from me. Yeah. I used to watch, you know, the reruns of Gilligan's Island back in the day, and I would be so upset. Like, Mom, don't they know they should try it again? He was yes. so close with that boat. And if he just would have tried the boat again and done something different, they would be off the island. She would be like, then there wouldn't be a show, you know. Um, so, yeah, yeah something I learned. I don't like a lot of the villains on things, you know, but without the villain we don't have drama right every good script you have to have the villain so yeah they got to keep on coming and that's what keeps us right there yeah your friend nicole loves the villain she said she yeah the villain the the villain. <laughs> <laughs> favorite um i just wait what what are you gonna say What's sorry uh, i was just gonna say it for me hmm? sorry, sorry go ahead all I was going to say is that, like, for me watching sitcoms and being on a sitcom, I always used to be like, why is every episode about, like, this stupid misunderstanding? Like, what is wrong with these people? There's Three's no company. communication. It's always, like, <laughs> I've never heard something. This whole right. thing is a misunderstanding. Such a waste of time. Every episode. Of, that so. was every episode of Three's Company right there. Yes, yes in general, right? I mean, that's the yeah. great yeah. yeah, great comedy. It's like who's on first? Yeah, right? yes, yeah. Um, I was going to say, you know, when I was producing, we were uh, looking at doing kind of a behind the scenes of Baywatch that was going to be scripted, um, and uh, Nicole was attached to it. And I remember your interview. Like, I remember, did we meet at Jerry's Deli? I yeah. Think? Yeah, we did. Oh my gosh, you told us, have you ever told this story before? You told the story of we were swimming and there was a dead guy? <laughs> yes, I did. Tell the story. I did, I did. I can't ever get over it. I'm traumatized for life with this thing. I think about it every once in a while. I'm like, oh my gosh, that dead guy, she brushed up against the dead guy. You know? yeah. The water, the water that the dead guy was in was like hitting me in the face and in my mouth. <laughs> and then like, I'm filming. Yep. <laughs> I'm filming. <laughs> 
Yeah, and then hours later, we're like out on a barge and they're like handing sandwiches out for lunch. And I'm like looking at the, the meat, like the deli meat or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> save it. I'm not eating for the next few days. <laughs> huh? Did you talk about that in the documentary? I'm not sure if that made it in the cut or not. Um, I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. But um, we did talk about it on, on the podcast too. Uh, because yeah, people people get fascinated by that. But like, you know, people don't realize what comes up out of that water after it rains. And it's just yeah. such, a, such a cesspool. It's disgusting. So yeah, surprise, really. But yeah, Ugh. of course it would be me. Of course it would be me. But. I, I, you know, it's fine. I have another question for you too. As far as when you're talking about future projects or whatever you're working on and you meet, let's say at a Jerry's Deli or any restaurant, are you concerned about people overhear, overhearing your conversation? Meaning that, the, especially in Los Angeles, is, there was always tabloids. There's always something. I mean, they still are. But it, the reason I, I asked that question, I had, I had one like interview like that. It was with Disney. And I was. they took me to a restaurant in a booth that was so deep-seated. And the walls were kind of high. And it was for a reason. They were so concerned about it being in the LA Times. And I was like, this isn't a big deal. This is you know, a radio, radio situation. And yet you're talking about television and popular, the most popular show of all time. Did you ever, were you ever concerned about what was around you when you're having these meetings? No, but I do. What comes to mind is my mother and my grandmother when I was little, and if they would be talking about somebody at a restaurant, you know, one of their friends, if they were gossiping at all, they would say, don't say the full name. You have to say N or you know d yeah. you don't say the full name you know and i just remember them like really freaking out someone's gonna hear you you know uh but no not with i don't know maybe we should have but no no not at all not at all nicole do you ever go through anything like that whether you're out at a club or anything that you're worried about what you said was going to get caught um usually when we do like a production meeting or talking i like to go somewhere where it's pretty quiet just because people are nosy yeah people are nosy yeah. and they just try to listen and then and you're surrounded by industry people and and then not, you know, and other people who are just maybe trying to listen. I just think it's always safe, more safe. But um, I think it's not that I think anything I have is so genius that somebody's going <laughs> to go steal yeah. it. No, but, but you're more of a name, Nicole. And so I think you're more, you know, people recognize you more. And so, but, you know. Maybe like that. Do, do you remember that from our meeting? Did we worry about that then? I don't think so, but it was also like daytime, Jerry's Deli. Those booths were pretty big. It's pretty loud in there. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's a real quiet little coffee shop or anything. But, um, you know, if you, if you go have a meeting at Starbucks and everybody's in there quiet on their computer and you're in the corner chatting about business, everybody can hear you. So, you know, there's those, those kind of situations. Yeah. Where, and probably you don't want to annoy everybody like that. So. So no, I need to be no. Maybe I should. But, um, yeah. So I mean, so Nan Nancy, one of the questions I always ask is, if you had to do this all over again, would you recommend this career for someone who says, I want to go to LA, I want to be a star? You know, I think it's just about following your passions in life, right? What you really want to do. And I just think now it's a, a, the business is so much different. I would suggest that somebody, you know, maybe – you know, if they're inclined to be a writer or a director or a producer, that they also, you know, look at that as well. And I, I don't know if, I think it's, I think there's a bigger pool of actors nowadays. I think with videos and casting directors see thousands of people on videotapes, people can send in their tapes from all over the nation. You don't even have to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I think whatever you do, do 100%. But I, I would suggest like also write, also, you know, do as much as you can. Um, and then, you know, I don't know. I think it's good to have a backup. I, I didn't have a backup cause I never, I, I was just working when I was younger, you know? Um, but I do think education is really important at the same time. If somebody's working, I think you should work. You know, I think when opportunity knocks and that door's open, you know, walk through it. Um, one of a member of our family, um, called and said, you know, um, Grace, and, I, and it's Grace Van Patten who is on, um, she's become, she's going to be a huge star. She's on Tell Me Lies. I don't know if you've seen that show on Hulu. Um, she's also been on Broadway with um, uh, 
she's I'm going blank now on the name, but anyway, she's had a great career um, so far. But I remember her mom called me and said, you know, Grace is thinking about not going to school and you know acting instead. And you know, what do you think about that? You know, the whole family is saying she should really go to school. And I said, you know what? I think if she's going to work, she's going to work and give it six months to a year. Like I think of um, Stevie Nicks. I guess Stevie Nicks's dad said to her, "Give it six months, and if you don't work, then do something else." Yeah. And it kind of put the fire under her a little bit. Like, I got six months. I better make this work. At the same time, there's other people that are more character actors, and it takes years for them, you know? Um, I mean, I don't know if Kirstie Alley was running around, like, not getting work, or she just decided to become an actor later. But I know she was she was later. So I don't know if we can have blanket advice for any one, one person. But I would say to diversify as much as possible and, you know, be creative. Um, you know, and, and write or, geez, look at like Jamie Sheridan, but he's, is that, am I saying that right? You got Yellowstone and is that his yeah. name? Yeah. Well, he's obviously a brilliant writer, um, but um, and not everyone's going to be like that. But, you know, I just, I've heard of so many people like, you know, it wasn't a Chaz commentary, like he wrote his one man show and then Robert De Niro, I think, came to see it. You know, I think you yeah. need to create more opportunities like that in this climate. Um, I also think people need to say to themselves, are they doing it for the right reasons? Because I'm, I'm listening to you and you're right. You're on the nose with everything. But then I'm like, in my mind, but I'm also like, you know, pessimist all the time. But I'm like, because so, people think they, they're going to get involved with it because they think it's easy. They don't, they think actor, not director, because they don't want to do the work. They just think it's just going to be this easy thing, this easy life. Not everybody, obviously, but I think that there is a large amount of people that think, Oh, I can just say dialogue and put myself on tape and I'll be, you know, this yeah. you know, Hollywood star. But it's like you have to, you know, be in it for the love of the art of it. Yeah. And if you're not interested in the writing and the directing or at least learning about those aspects, then you're probably not in the right field. You know, there's no appreciation there. So 100 percent. And so many people do it, I think, maybe just because they want to be famous, which I, I wish I would have had a little more of that. I think that maybe that would have been something that I would have been more cognizant of, like, oh, you know, but I don't know if it would have made a difference, but I never thought about that at all. Like, I just wanted, I love the work, you know? Yeah. And I do think you're so right because so many people are just like, I want to be famous, you know? But now people can be famous for any. Well, yeah. yeah. So the internet. Sure. That's what the internet is for. People who just want to be famous, stick to the yeah. internet, please. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not easy either, I guess. And some people are really talented at it, you know? Yeah. Um, I can know, I don't know how they do it. I don't think I can. I don't know. So I was wondering, people who, you know, whether it's uh, playing sports or whether it's, it's acting, it's, you know, there, there's an art to it. You have to be extremely talented. But I was thinking if you get into it for the fame and for the money, you're, you aren't going to succeed in the long run. It, you know, if you if it's about your craft and really enjoying what you're doing, I think that's when your success comes in to everything. Yeah, do what you, know, you your want. Your passion. Will come, you know, is what my mom used to always say. At the same time, you know, money and investing and handling that properly. So many actors have gone down the road of having their manager steal their money or thinking that, oh, this is going to last forever. You know, I was always taught, like, you don't know when your next job is coming. You can't think about that money that might have to last you the whole year, you know. So that's where my mom is really, you know, good at. And then I married into an actor family. And it's, you know, it's all about that. You know, you don't know when your next job is coming. So, yeah. um, you know, whether it's investing or buying property that, you know, it's all about residual income. What can you set yourself up for to have in case, you know, you were, you know, your income goes away tomorrow, you know? Yeah. Yes. So that's, that's important too. I think that's maybe good advice for somebody that's been starting to work out, you know, to work. Yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Nancy, I, I loved it. I really appreciate your time. That was a lot of fun yeah. for me. Well, good talking to you guys. Good talking to you guys. And I can't wait to see the Baywatch documentary, Nicole. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you'll be really happy with it. It's really taken on a life of its own. And um, it really looks beautiful and um, getting really good reactions. So I'm excited. Excited for everybody to see it. And everybody go follow Nancy on social media and um, subscribe to us. And... Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all of your experience and knowledge with us. It was really, really great to hear. Thank you, guys. It was great hanging out with you today. Thank you very much. Thank Take care, guys. Nancy. Bye. That was uh, that was cool. That was that was neat. Yeah, I tell you, I'm. Uh, 
I'm a fan of soap operas and I was curious to know how they worked. I'm glad you, you brought her on to, you know, kind of let me know how, you know, how it works because you, you know, you talk about it all the time and, and other guests have talked about the long hours and having to get this down. And, and even if you're doing a 22 minute sitcom, there's a ton of work that goes into it. It's not like you just show up on a Thursday night and you knock out 22 minutes and you go home and it's going, right. oh, that was easy. I was stealing money. It's not that there are read throughs and there's script changes and, there's a there's a lot going on that you need to know what everyone's doing and where to stand and things that people don't even pick up who are just fans of television shows that man if, if you don't hit your mark guess what we all got to do it all over again is there's a, a lot of work that goes into this art it's not as easy as you know the, the good people make it look yeah no it's true and i love hearing other people's stories and experiences too because you know, everybody has their own and it's unique in every way. So, uh, and, and how everybody gets to where they are and their journey. It's really, it's really kind of fascinating. Exactly right. Exactly right. Nicole, that was a lot of fun. So we'll, uh, we'll yeah. come back next, ne next time and we'll uh, have another big show. And, and of course, uh, we, we appreciate everyone that takes time to, uh, to pay attention to perfectly twisted with Nicole Eggert. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. And don't forget to write in for the Nicole's mailbag so we can read your questions. Dave can, Put me on the spot with all your uh, grueling questions. <laughs> <laughs> I like no, it. Really I like the fact people want to know what you're thinking. I, I yeah. Think it's cool. And it makes me think of things I wouldn't, you know, that I normally just brush off. So it's it's always fun. But, exactly. Um, yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks for today. And I'll see you next week and see everybody else next week.